My name is Nancy Van Wee, and I am co-founder of Crane Mountain Valley Horse Rescue with my husband Ed Morozik. I have been a, I have loved horses since birth, and horses are my soul. They always have been, and I think they have always been Eddie's too. I'm Ed Morozik, and I'm the president of Crane Mountain Valley Horse Rescue. I used to work at the racetrack. I worked at Belmont Aqueduct, and. Uh, that's where my love for horses began. You know, I just had a love for the Adirondacks and the Catskills. And, and I said, one day I'm just gonna cross that Tamsey Bridge and never come back, and I did. And the only time I've been back over there is to pick up horses out of the racetrack. Bought the farm in Thurman together in 2002 and got Eddie his first horse. And when we moved up to Thurman, um, because of the reputation of the track and stuff like that, uh, we had a couple of trainers call us and they had problem horses that, you know, with bad attitudes and needed to be fixed. So, out of, uh, <clears throat> that's where it basically started, where we started, you know, we had a rescue, there was New York Rescue down there that was taking thoroughbreds off the racetrack. So they asked us to sponsor them, you know, and fix them up, train them. And I turned around one day, looked out in my backyard, and it was full of horses. <laughs> so what we used to do was retrain them and then send them back and she would adopt them out. So from there, we, we started getting other calls in, you know, about people with horse problems, this and that. And it's just, it, I mean, one day, it was, we were at Crane Mountain Valley Horse Rescue. My name is Chantelle Galilland. I am the barn manager at Crane Mountain Valley Horse Rescue. I think I was born loving horses and I had two parents that are pretty animal crazy and uh, anywhere we moved, because my dad was in the Navy, um, we, my parents just, they fed that horse habit. Uh, I have been around horses since before I could walk. Um, my mom made sure I started riding when I was about 18 months of age, 18 months old, so. In, I think it was September of 2014, uh, Crane Mountain actually did um, a large horse seizure. It was a massive neglect case, but they had so many mares and foals that um, needed to be separated from their mothers, even though they were pretty young, and so they went to my parents' farm. Um, so that was my first kind of experience with rescuing horses, um, and then a couple of years down the line, I was out here training horses, and Eddie and Nancy asked me if I would work here full time. And I was like, yes, please. So the Sally E. Morehouse Memorial Rehabilitation and Training Center is a new facility that we just built. Um, Sally E. Morehouse is a, a longtime donor and friend who at the age of 20 was injured in a car accident that left her a quadriplegic. Sally's goal was to be able to brush a horse and uh, it needed to be a horse that understood Sally's vulnerabilities and was not afraid of the chair. And so when Sally came here, we introduced her to Buck, one of our rescue horses, and they developed an instant bond and Buck loved Sally, Sally loved Buck. We would wheel her in there and she would brush him and he would nuzzle her and push her around in her chair. And every year for many years, Sally would come up to visit with Buck. And when her body started to fail her and she was no longer able to travel and eventually bedridden, um, instead of her coming to see Buck, we would send her pictures of Buck. And every year we would call her a couple times a year, especially around Christmas time, and talk to her. Um, and every year she would send a beautiful gift in Buck's honor. And last year we learned that Sally passed away. And at the time of her passing, she had on her big screen TV and around her room photos of Buck. So we received a check in her memory saying that it seemed a fitting tribute to Sally, who at her time of um, slipping into glory was surrounded by Buck. And we had long wanted to build a facility to be able to be um, a facility that was four seasons so that we could run our programs with education 
programs, outreach programs, and training programs with the horses um, in all seasons without worrying about the elements. And so when that first gift came in, um, it was a no-brainer that we wanted to use that as the catalyst for this facility. So we talked to the person who made that amazing gift and let her know that we wanted to do this and she loved the idea. Um, and so we embarked on a capital campaign and we were invited to, it was a big honor to be invited to speak at Sally's Memorial. And when we presented this idea to her family, they also embraced it. Um, and so we launched a capital campaign in November of 2016 and the response was overwhelming and heartwarming and by February we raised enough money to break ground on the building. My day to day depends on when I wake up, walk out the door and what did they do. Uh, they break fences or somebody ripped the door off a barn or something happened and well if nothing happens like that then I just go back to building barns and fencing. It's Fencing is constant around here. You're always you know, repairing it and you're always putting up more. It's 365 days a year, seven days a week. Um, there's no such thing as a holiday or a sick day because no matter what, the horses need food and care. Um, so rain, sleet, snow or shine, you can't just say it's too cold out, it's too wet out, it's too sunny out, it's too something out, too hot out. An average day is, um, I usually get here around 8 after doing all of my own horses and then um, we feed. This usually takes about half an hour or so, get everyone put out. Um, and then if it's a hot day, we'll fly spray, make sure everyone's protected from the bugs. Uh, if it's a cold day, we'll probably go around and break ice out of the buckets. Um, you know, make sure everyone has water. And then once those daily chores are done, and as well as like general medical care, we'll do. Um, once that's done, we we'll go in for the long haul. It takes a lot of time to clean up after about 18 horses, which is what I think we have right now. Uh, <laughs> um, and it takes a couple of hours. And once I'm done cleaning up, mucking, um, general maintenance, then I will start working with horses. So. so for the amount of horses that we have on the property now, every horse eats a little bit different. It's kind of by the pound. Um, that and but if you if we we buy bales of hay that are about 55 pounds a piece and one bale will feed three to four horses depending on the horse and how much it eats um, generally about three horses we go through right now um, about 325 of those square bales every five to six weeks it's nine tons of hay every five to six weeks um, and our hay is one of our largest expenses. It's about, I think, fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars a year just for our hay load. Grain. Um, not all horses eat grain, but most of ours do, and each one requires a different type of grain or a different amount of grain based on metabolism, weight, whether or not they're in training or not in training. Again, just like humans. Um, Water is key. That's not necessarily an expense for us because we're fortunate enough to have a well. Um, and then various medications, deworming medications, veterinary care. So all of our horses get vaccinated for all of the required vaccinations. They get physicals and blood work. They have dental work. Um, once, at least once a year, some of them require twice a year, the older horses whose teeth grow faster. Farrier care which is uh, every six to eight weeks. And again, depending on the horse, that could be as simple and, I don't wanna say inexpensive because every six weeks trimming a horse racks up when you have 18, but it could be as minor, if you will, as trimming a horse and as major as corrective shoes. We have three that need corrective shoes um, for various reasons, um, which can be an added expense. That's for a healthy horse. So mommy is, she's, she's, 
She's a little bit magic. Um, so Mommy is one of 41 horses that was seized from a hoarding situation in 2013. She is the reason that um, all 41 were saved. She was taking her foal out and um, she had, the woman had no fence and the woman wasn't a mean person, but she's what was considered a hoarder. You know, it, it, it's a sickness. And uh, she just, her horses were just reproducing and she wasn't doing anything about it. I mean, she had all stallions and all mares and the herd got bigger. And we actually had to remove horses. There were more bones and carcasses laying on that ground than there were live horses. So, uh, Mommy's the one who started that. She went out and feeding her foal, and somebody took a picture of her because she was a uh, one on a Henneke. A Henneke scale judges, you know, it, it judges horses from skin and bone to overweight. So, one is about the lowest. That's just about dead. Mom was, mommy was a one. It was the worst case out of all of them. Um, she was pretty much near death when she came in. Uh, extreme starvation. And when they actually went to seize all of those horses, they didn't even know she was there. There was another stallion that started screaming and wouldn't leave. So Eddie wandered out into the woods and he found her tied to a tree with her foal. Um, and she was just really, really bad off. So she came here and Eddie and Nancy did some great work along with their whole team. They've all been rehabilitated and placed. Uh, mommy has is the last one. She's still here. Her son recovered 100% and is fine. Um, she's still here, but she's currently in training. Um, she's doing exceptionally well. She's one of the horses where we don't know what kind of emotional trauma she may or may not have experienced. She didn't, she starved them, but she, I don't, she didn't, she wasn't a mean person or a physically abusive person. So all of the horses that came out of there with the exception of one, who I just think was a feral, feral, feral horse, were fine with human interaction. It was just recovering their little bodies. Um, and so mommy now is in training. Um, she's almost 10 years old. So it's kind of a late start, but we don't know if she's ever been ridden. She kind of exhibits behavior as if she's had a saddle on because she received it pretty quickly. But um, as Chantel, our barn manager and trainer says, we're going to start her as if she's never had a saddle on her or a rider on her, just because that's the smarter way to do it for safety reasons and for um, setting her up for success. So. As far as her rehabilitation to become a horse that would be adoptable. Um, the first challenge was farrier care. She initially and for some time had to be sedated to be worked on by the farrier. And to this day, she's still kind of touchy. Like she does let the farriers work on her, but she'll rip her foot or hoof away after a certain amount of time. And it's the same thing. You just got to go slow and take your time building up that trust. Um, and now as far as rehabilitating her, there's two things. First of all is to make sure that we can get her saddle broke. I'm sorry, started under saddle. And also she has a debilitating fear of trailers. So that's the next thing that we'll work on. But um, we'll get her a little more trustworthy just in the arena and maybe being handled, ridden under saddle. And once she's built up a little bit more trust in me, then we'll tackle the trailer thing. So. The process has been challenging. Um, she tolerates a lot of things and she's very, very, very friendly. She's very human oriented. She loves to be with you, but she's also kind of a highly reactive horse, at least in this stage in her training. Um, and again, this is where she gets into situations where she's kind of constrained. We started with lunging. Um, because the most important thing you can do for a saddle horse is make sure that they 110% understand the go forward cue. So the lunging is setting that into motion. So it does two things. It helps her reinforce that when we're working with her, 
forward, 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 and forward in a straight line, not like forward this way and that way, but forward in a straight line, consistently where I'm telling her to go. Um, and it's also very much about respecting my space. So um, one of the key, the key issues with mommy is even though she's a little girl, she's definitely got some muscle. Um, so when she's ever, she's distressed or she's confused or whatever, her kind of go-to thing is to um, run over you. <laughs> so uh, the lunging is just reinforcing my personal space and you move in a circle around me. There are parts where she's like, oh, I've done that before. And then there are parts where she's like, oh, I don't know what this is and I'm gonna die. Uh, so, and then you have to kindly explain to her that no, you're not gonna die, everything's gonna be okay. Um, but otherwise, it's been going really well. Um, just getting her out and exposing her to new things. And um, yeah, that's so, the next process, I think when we left off is we've started ground driving her. So that'll be the next thing that she has to do before we start putting the saddle on her and really getting all over her body in preparation to, to ride her. Um, she's got to be able to tolerate things banging on her sides, like light ropes or whatever. And she's also got to learn to steer properly um, before anyone gets on her, so. Um, call, if people have any questions, call. But the main thing I can tell people, and hopefully people who are watching this that are interested in getting horses, do your homework. I mean, that's, our, you know, I wish we were out of business. I really do. Now I go back to breeding quarter horses like I originally wanted to. But uh, just do your homework. I love working with horses. This is absolutely my dream job, of course. Um, and I love being around them. and. I'll shut up now because I'm going on, but I would say my favorite thing besides that is honestly the human relationships I've made here. So I guess the, the part of the mission that we do here is, that is really important to me and has made the biggest impact on my life is just the human relationships I've formed with like our volunteers who come out every week, uh, the 4-H club I run. I love all my 4-H kids and um, when they come here they just learn so much and it's really really cool to kind of see their their brains working and, um, and just how fascinated and passionate they are about horses um, and you know just I guess like the level of joy we can bring to people who don't necessarily have that joy available to them in the rest of their lives. So like the ARC kind of outreach programs we do, I love it when those guys come and they help out so they feel really empowered and just like how happy they are when they get to be around horses. That's just the coolest part for me. Well, one, what Crane Mountain Valley Horse Rescue strives to do for the community is in addition to being a rescue and rehabilitation program for horses, um, as an educational and humanitarian not-for-profit organization, we also have recognized personally the healing power of horses for people in need. And so through our education and outreach programs, we want to be a facility that can facilitate the healing of humans through that power of horses as well.